on. Now I'm live. Now I'm going. Okay. Old platforms are a go. Welcome. This is a, an amazing day. There's Alex upstairs. Ha ha. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm Ali Benjamin. And this is Growing Edge Live Sunday broadcast. And just really, really feeling blessed today. So I'm going to play a our little intro. So here we go. Free my mind, open my heart with the whispers of truth to live a conscious life, to live a conscious life on the growing edge. Oh, so good to be here. So feeling so blessed. Um, and I wanted to say thank you to all of you that outreached to me today. It is a particularly hard day for me. And it's a particularly amazing, joyful, fabulous um, day for me. My son Adam was born 37 years ago. He, he would be turning 36 today. And uh, Adam made his transition in 2018. And so today's a special day that um, I call Adam Day. And uh, thank you for extending your, your happy Adam Day wishes. And um, I'm feeling very blessed today with the memories and the love that I'm experiencing from my family and my friends. And so thank you. So today uh, we are, I'm here in Farmington, Utah. I'd love to know where you are, where are you watching from? And I'd love it if you would comment throughout my talk, go ahead and um, post some notes because <clears throat> when we contribute, when we participate in, in something dynamic, like uh, our, our awakening, like, um, when we're having a conversation like this, and I know it seems like we're not really having a conversation, it's just me, but I feel like we are in in this particular virtual time bubble. This little box that you're watching um, is really a portal into each other's hearts, into each other's space. And so if you comment, if you participate in this conversation, then we really benefit from the synergy that we create when we come together, that we are truly greater than the sum of our parts. When we come together with an intention, when we come together in spiritual community, when we come together to grow, to learn, and we're intentional about that, we participate in that, we create a synergy, and that synergy is an energy that will bless you and continue to bless you as you move through your week. So go ahead and participate, create the, get this energy moving as I start my talk today, which is um, actualizing your vision. Last week, I did a visioning process. And if you didn't get a chance to see it, you can find it um, on either on my YouTube channel at Satya Center or somewhere in my timeline on Facebook. Um, but you can find that. And if you would like a recording of it so you can do it um, on your own time, please DM me and I'll send that to you. So last week we did a visioning and the whole month of January is a really, really good time to, to sort of cast a vision and to think about what it is that we want to experience over the next 12 months. And so today, actualize your vision is going to be a step further into being a conscious co-creator of your life. But before that, I'd like us to connect in and arrive and center and ground ourselves together in this beautiful container that we're calling Growing Edge Live Sunday Broadcast. So if you will, take a moment cl to close the outer eyes and just breathe and relax the body and center yourself from the head down into the heart. 
when we take that 18 inch journey down into our heart center, we become more localized. We bring our awareness into this beautiful heart space that is where we get a real sense of presence. We get a sense of who we really are beyond our physical self, beyond our mental self, beyond our emotions and our feelings. We deepen into who we really are as a spiritual being, an aspect of the divine, an individualized center, if you will, a center in the very mind and heart of God, in the very body of God, because we're three in one, we're body, mind, and spirit. And so when we drop into that heart space, we anchor ourselves into the present moment. We anchor ourselves into the body of God. We anchor ourselves into divine intelligence, the mind of God. And we anchor ourselves into the eternal into our essential self, which is beyond time and space, but includes all time and space. So we're occupying not only the here and now, we're occupying a dimension that our, our rational linear mind has a hard time grasping. We're anchoring ourselves into our eternal, infinite essence where we feel that and we know and we absolutely actualize the oneness. Just breathe that in for a moment. There is only one, one power, presence, one infinite organizing intelligence that we are right now. We are bringing it into time and space. We are the way that God shows up as Ali, as Joe, as Sue, as Belinda, as Miles, as Thomas, as Sophia, as Michael and Alex and Adam and Chris, whatever your name is, whoever you are showing up as, your unique incarnation, it doesn't matter. We're all reflections of the one. Feel that now. And as you feel into that, sort of the edges become blurred between you and everything else and you become aware of this infinite eternal presence that is never in absence. Its circumference is nowhere and its center is everywhere and you are it. And so as you arrive in that place, as you say yes to what wants to come forward today, let us just give a sigh of gratitude. Ah, and open the eyes and be fully present, fully present today for what I'm channeling, what I'm downloading, what I'm bringing forward through my vehicle that my non physical, broader perspective is broadcasting through me, picking up on, on what your soul is wanting to hear or needing to hear, to take your next evolutionary step into your own becoming, what wants to happen through you. And so that's what I'm talking about today, actualizing your vision. And what's a vision? A vision is something that we take time to connect with. We take time to give birth to. We can actually do what's called a visioning process. And a visioning process is a process where we get still, we go into a meditative state, we activates the field of love and appreciation. And it's in that place of love and appreciation in this very intentional meditative state that we then ask particular questions that bring to us, that activate our intuition, 
that open that inner ear so what, that we can hear something beyond the audible, that activate the inner eye so that we can see beyond the visible, and we activate an opening of the heart, a receptivity and a willingness that, so that we can receive and feel fully deserving of the vision or what we're wanting, our heart's desires or our longings. And so we create this container through a process. We did it last week. And so me, me just talking about it, you'll get the idea and you can actually do a little visioning right now as you tune in. Who are you? What do you want to become? What do you envision your life to be? Not the stuff, not the cars and the, the trips and the whatever else shows up in the physical. That's kind of a small part of it. There's something more to casting a vision. It's a particular feeling. It's more about who you want to be. So who do you want to be in 2022? How do you want to be? What do you want to be experiencing? And you take some time to <clears throat> contemplate that. Now, contemplation is a deep spiritual practice. Contemplation requires being present, mindfulness, activating the inquisitive mind that sort of wants to take a co-creative wander, a curious dive into who and what you're becoming because something wants to come forward through you. There's a new you wanting to come forward. There's a new life that you're here to give birth to. There's things that you're here to do and be in the world that will benefit not only yourself and your own abundance and prosperity and, and creativity and well-being, but there's something that wants to come through you to serve humanity, to bring more light, to bring the God life, the God essence into form. And so when you get clear that you're more than just the mind and the, the body, that you're this essence and this essential self is like knocking at the door of your heart saying, let me free, let me out, let me become who I'm here to become, let me become who I'm here to create. Because <clears throat> you are a highly creative being that creates your life one thought at a time, one action at a time, one interaction, one response at a time, you are always engaged in the process of creation. And so as a highly creative artist of life, you're the artist of your life, you get to cast a vision. You get to catch a vision, and then you get to cast that vision. How do you cast a vision? You begin to act in a certain way. You begin to think in a certain way. You begin to engage in the world doing things that you feel inspired to do that you know are going to benefit yourself and all humanity. So one thing about visioning and visualizing is you get super clear on your values. Why is that important? It's important to understand what you value because when you can get clear on, let's say, two, three, four, five words that best describe or capture or encompass your values in life, then you can use those words to create mantras, to create affirmations that if you repeat them often enough, take you into the frequency of your vision because it's very important that we maintain an ongoing dialogue not a necessarily a spoken dialogue but an energetic dialogue with the you you're becoming so we cast a vision for how we want to feel and be a year from now and then we we identify words that encapsulate our values 
And then we say them in, in the stillness of our own mind. We sing them, we repeat them, we share them with others that can hold our vision in a positive way. And we begin to be an energetic match to that future self that we're becoming, that, that idea in the mind of God that we caught. We but start to vibrate at the energy of your values, of our values. So my values for this year are calm, flow, ease, and creativity and sovereignty. And so those are my words. And so everything I do, because I keep those words at the forefront of my heart and mind, everything I do is, is, is infused with those feelings, those vibrations of calmness, of ease and flow and sovereignty. So that's mine. What's yours? What are your words for this year? What are your values for this year? Because when you're clear on those, when you're really clear for yourself, you've caught the vision, you've identified the values, you begin to create a, a relationship with those words, those values, and you cast the vision, meaning you take it out into the world. You begin to behave and react and respond like the man or woman that is living that life now. Then you're actualizing your vision. So I've taken the word vision and I've created one of my um, acronyms for, for vision. And um, so number one, is, first of all, we have to believe. Having an attitude of belief, of trust, of faith that we can create our future through our words, through our actions, through all that we, we think about and how we interact in the world. If we believe that we're that powerful, we have to believe in our own power. And just by the sheer fact that you were born, incarnated into this physical life, into this body, tells me and tells you and tells everyone else that you are here by divine appointment on this planet Spirit wanted to come through, give birth to you, to your particular uniqueness, and that that is valuable and that you are worthy of experiencing a bigger life, of experiencing the life your soul wants to create. And so when you believe in yourself, when you believe in your values, when you believe that you're a co-creator, then you start to live this vision actualize your vision. And by the way, if you'd like to, to get a recording of, of me leading you through the visioning process, just DM me and I'll send that to you. So we can take the word vision, V-I-S-I-O-N, and we can use that as a way, a tool of, of actualizing so that we can actualize. Our brain likes easy things to remember. So V stands for values. You have to identify your values. I stands for inquiry. You, me, we are inquisitive beings. We have the power to inquire. We have the power to ask questions that will stir our soul, that will allow deeper meaning and awareness and understanding to come forth through our inquiry. We get to ask empowering questions that clarify our vision. Like, what is this for me? This thing that's happening in my life. And maybe you're experiencing a struggle and you're thinking, oh my God, I've done all those positive things that Reverend Ali mentioned. I've, I'm, I'm being more mindful. I'm slowing down. I'm realizing my worth. I'm doing meditation. I'm taking care of my physical body. I'm being more peaceful and accepting what is. I'm being kind and generous and loving and helpful. And you're doing all those things, but you're experiencing challenges and struggles, right? Yeah, we all do it. Just because we're spiritual doesn't mean we bypass all of the physical. We get to bring our spiritual know-how, our spiritual awareness into our struggles. So we up-level because we live in a, a field or a world of 
of the law of attraction, the law of cause of and effect, we have to vibrate at the energy of what we want to experience. So we inquire, we ask questions, we get super clear on what is this for me? What am I being called to step up into? Where am I needing to clean up my act? Where do I need to look at where I get petty and critical and cynical? And, and can I use those very things to get clearer about my shenanigans, about my growing edge, the things I need to clean up? And we get curious about ourselves and we begin to allow the light of awareness through by our inquiry. So we identify our values, we inquire, and then we, we see it. We see our vision regularly, and it's in the seeing it, it's keeping it alive, it's giving us, giving our attention to what we want to be, of who we want to be, how we want to feel, how we want to experience what we value most. We see it. When we see it, we can be it. So we keep that in mind. We keep our vision alive. We vision it every morning. Take, take five minutes every morning after your meditation, just visualizing, seeing it. And so <clears throat> when we identify our values, occupy our values, live our values, when we do deep inquiry, when we continue to see it, what that does, it activates our intuition. And that's the fourth letter, intuition. We are intuitive beings. It's a faculty. It's like our sixth sense. We are intuitive beings that if we're paying attention, we can tune in to deeper messages, guidance, inspiration that's coming at us all the time when we have the eyes to see the ears to hear and it's up to you to do occupy your values do some inquiry continue to see your vision and then your then your intuition is expanded it's awakened you get intuitive hits all the time and why is this important because our intuition is our guide we have an inner guidance system. Each of us, we get to tune into that. We begin, we begin to build trust in it. So we don't just brush it off as a, a fleeting idea or a, a hunch, but we absolutely listen and we follow it. So then we become open. And that's the next letter, O. We become open. We become highly receptive. We become willing to be open to others. We don't just stay small. We have to be a bit vulnerable. We have to be a bit more open, a bit more out there, a bit more engaged. Our open nature, our vulnerability will allow new opportunities to come in. This is up to you. This is up to me. This is what we can all do to bring more love, peace, joy, harmony, beauty into this world. It doesn't just show up because we wish. If we want to change the world, we have to be the change. And so we stay open to the broader, broader life. We stay open to our oneness and we engage in the field of oneness, not by, by staying small, but opening. We begin to open more fully to what wants to happen. And we have to pay attention. We have to be open, open-minded, open-hearted, open with our generosity. So the next and the final <clears throat> word is nurture. So we've got values, we've got inquiry, we've got um, see it. Is that the next one? Yep, see it. And then we've got intuition, and then we've got openness. And then the last word letter N in the word vision is represents for me and for you, for us today, nurture. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm nurturing. I'm nurturing myself. I'm nurturing my dream by offering this broadcast. I'm nurturing you by doing something to serve 
you that I hope is so helpful for you. And so we nurture in different ways. You get to nurture your vision by tending to it. I've created this beautiful meditation room. This is about me nurturing myself, nurturing my life, giving myself um, wonderful experiences in a beautiful setting. That feeds my soul. That, that sets me up to catch my downloads, to be inspired. How are you taking care of yourself? How are you practicing self-love and care? So we get to nurture ourselves. And when we nurture ourselves, when we fill our own cup, we've got plenty to share and to spare. We get to nurture our dreams. We get to nurture our visions. We get to nurture the world. We get to nurture each other. There's a sweetness that comes when we love ourselves so much. We love our God-given life so much. We love each other so much. There's a sweetness to us. And it's like the most beautiful flower that is so rich with pollen that it attracts all the bees. We become like that beautiful flower. And as we blossom, we release a fragrance of love and compassion and beauty and kindness that is so attractive that you will never be lonely. You will never feel confused. You'll never be lacking for inspiration or creative ideas or fun or joy or whatever. You will have everything that is of true value to you and your soul. So that is my gift for you today. And I trust that this has supported you. I'd love to hear back. Sometimes I don't know if what I'm sharing is of value because I don't hear back and, and my ego likes to hear back. So let me know, has this helped? Have you put some of the stuff I've shared to practice? Because I'd love to know that it's working. And um, I love you very much. And I'd like to share before I do my closing prayer. We've got something called Growing Edge Live Conversations. And this is beginning on this coming up Tuesday. It's on the second Tuesday of every month at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. I'm going to be going into the Zoom room to do a, an intimate, deep dive conversation. I don't know where it's really going. I think we're discussing fear this, this Tuesday and how fear can be one of our greatest guides. Um, and we're probably going to go off into all different directions and it's going to be juicy and it's going to be wonderful and it's going to be with like-minded people and we're going to go deep and it's going to be a, like a, a tribe or a, a virtual village of people supporting one another, cheering each other on. So if you've been looking for something to a community to support you, join us for Growing Edge Live conversations every second Tuesday. I'll send you a link. I'll post it in the, in the notes below. Um, so I'd love to see you. It's no charge. We always offer things by donation, but there's no charge. So please invite anyone and everyone you think might benefit from it. So let's do an activation together. So tune in, touch your heart, get connected with yourself. Just feel waves of love from me right now. Feel the life force energy moving through you. Feel the love of God. Feel the very center of the universe right in your heart right now. The center is everywhere and you are it. Everywhere. We're all one. We're all everywhere. We're all in the very heart of God. And with this gratitude and love that is arising with this field, this container that we've created together, we are ripe to give birth to our visions. We are ripe to bring forth our values, to inquire deeply, to see our visions on a regular, constant basis and have access, constant, steady access to our intuition by remaining open and nurturing. This is how we vision. This is what we're doing together. This is what we're calling forth. And we are so blessed 
each of us so blessed. We count our blessings. We, we say, thank you, God. Thank you, life. This and something even better is now manifesting with grace and ease and flow and love. Lots of love to you. Peace and blessings. Mwah. Love you. See you next week. See you on Tuesday. Peace and blessings.